So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. So as most of you would be knowing that in this series we try to discuss some concepts related to finance and economics current affairs which can be very useful for you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So I hope you are ready for today's five questions and before moving to question number 1 for today, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So guys you can see this red button flashing on the screen. You can click on this to stay to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen. It can help you to stay in touch with us and get updated regarding every notification that comes up. Right? After that, you can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to resort, uh, we'll try to resort them as soon as possible. Right? So, I hope you all are ready for question number one. Here is your question number one. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. And let me just read it out. So, this question says, okay, it gives you a statement. And the statement is, the trend of public sector banks losing business to private banks reversed during 2020 as public sector banks have once again spiked up the, the lending activity. From the statements given below, select the option which is not a reason behind this trend reversal. So, okay, there's a statement given to you that talks about some sort of trend reversal that earlier uh, public sector banks, they have been losing out on their share to the private banks, but this trend has reversed in 2020. Now, you have to tell which out of these five statements is not a reason behind the changing of this trend, right? So, let's see who gives the correct answer. Okay, so here is the solution for this question and this solution says that the correct option is C. C means government pressure on PSBs. <clears throat> that means public sector banks to perform due diligence while giving loans to the retail and corporate borrowers. So this option is not a reason behind this trend reversal. Rest are. Okay, let's try to understand all the reasons one by one. Okay, number first says recapitalization by government. So guys, <coughs> sorry, if you remember when we talked about the recap bonds in one of our previous sessions, we talked about how India has already um, used the, uh, the, the, the tool called recapitalization bonds. So public sector banks, they have already been uh, recapitalized by the government a few years ago and apart from that, they are quite flush with liquidity now when government has opened so many schemes for them, right? So this has provided public sector banks with a lot of liquidity. So guys, one thing that we have to understand here is that public sector banks in India have had a huge significance. Uh, first of all, I think the, uh, the common man has some sort of trust on these public sector banks, which is not enjoyed by the private banks, right? So you can see here in this graph, see, public sector banks, they had a huge share, 71.6% in the lending activity. As you can see, shares in outstanding loans, right? So public sector banks had huge share. Apart, now this share, this has been consistent till this time, after that it started falling whereas the share of private banks has started to started to increase. So do you see how the, uh, the share of public sector banks is falling simultaneously? Private banks have, uh, private banks increase their lending activity. So this was due to the fact that public sector banks were going through a rough phase when they were having the problem of NPAs. NPAs, as most of us would be knowing, non-performing assets. The borrowers who do not pay back your loans are known as NPAs, right? So public sector banks, they were suffering through the problem of NPAs. It, it was a very major problem uh, which, were, which uh, Indian banking sector faced after 2016, right? And this problem, this had its build up in the pre-global financial crisis era when banks used to lend without giving much, uh, without giving much attention to the credit worthiness of the borrowers, right? We are not going there right now. So, in this phase, 
private sector banks they grew right but now after that after 2019 after 2019 public sector banks started have started to stabilize a bit as you can see they are falling falling but they have stabilized and also hiked a little bit whereas private sector banks they have also stabilized but after stabilization it points a little bit towards the downtrend right so this is the trend reversal that falling of psbs after that stabilization and little bit of growth simultaneously opposite with private sector banks growth when they were when public sector was falling and after that stabilization and a little fall so this is the time when the uh, problems with the uh, private sector banks have started to come up as you can remember the fall of yes bank right so this is the uh, trend right now see when public sector uh, banks they were going through a bad phase many steps were taken by government including the asset quality review prompt cor corrective action so in this phase when the steps were taken these steps supported the public sector banks which have anyhow contributed to this trend reversal currently right so i hope now you understand now going back to the options so that is why this recapitalization by by government to public sector banks when they were having a rough phase this has helped to stabilize their condition same goes for the asset quality review so under asset quality review uh, a proper review or you can say a proper proper analysis was done that in which bank what is the extent of the npa problem and what can be done to solve it right so the after that prompt corrective action that what steps should be take what after the asset quality review so under this prompt corrective action banks were put into different categories according to the problem of their uh, according to the extent of their npa problems and then steps were taken after that so these three steps help to stabilize the condition of public sector banks and also when this pub, these public sector banks they saw a huge rise in nps they became a little bit cautious in their lending activity and started to do due diligence and started to be a little bit of uh, they started to be a little bit uh, careful with the loans that they are making right so they, these things help to stabilize their condition so that is why option c is wrong because if banks are performing due diligence that is going to lead to a decrease or a fall in lending activity because then they are going to uh, check whether the borrower is credit worthy or not so these three points after that there is pressure on public sector banks currently so guys do you understand three steps which government took so they stabilized the condition and after that the fourth point that government is now pressurizing public sector banks that okay you make loan you do the lending activities to stimulate the economy so these four options are the correct options that why this trend reversal is taking place and also we are we are living in such uncertain times right now after the outbreak of pandemic the trust of people has again moved to the public sector banks uh, rather than the private banks and after that uh, uh, and also the fall of yes bank has contributed to the shift of trust right okay moving ahead here you can see some data about the lending activity i think we have discussed the trend with the help of a graph and guys you can um, you can uh, click a screenshot of this information for your future reference i think you can read this on your own nothing much to discuss here okay here is your question number 2 and this question says dash aggregates the amounts due between two parties and nets the difference into one payment to be paid by whichever party owes it whereas dash happens when one party defaults so as you can see this question also talks about some sort of defaults and some sort of to, uh, some sort of addition of payments right let's see who gives the correct answer and the correct option for this question is option e so option e means payment netting 
is the process of aggregating the payments whereas close out netting close out netting happens when there is a default by a borrower so guys okay let's take an example to understand this question uh, let's say you and your best friend you go out to watch a movie okay uh, first let's imagine we are not living in a pandemic and we can go out whenever we want to right so you and your best friend you go out to movie to watch some movie and you spend money on movie tickets right so this is the money spent by you after that you guys are hungry that is why in the interval what you do is you order some pasta and after that for this pasta your friend makes the payment and after that when the movie gets over you guys are still hungry and now you think that you need to go to McD to get a burger and here also your friend makes a payment after that when you are done with eating you think okay now we need a dessert and now let's go and have some ice cream and this ice cream payment is made by you because your friend spent on two things so guys here you see there since since you guys are thinking of dividing the total expenditure into two equal parts you have to calculate and then uh, then analyze that what is owed by you to your friend and what payment your friend has to make to you right so this is all very confusing if you are first doing the calculation for tickets then for pasta then for burger then for ice cream right so it would be better if you calculate the all the payments and then uh, come out on a single transaction or a single value that one party has to pay so basically you try to calculate who has paid more at the end and then divide that money accordingly right so this is what is the meaning of payment netting when there are two parties who do a lot of transactions with each other rather than ma making good each transaction or rather than paying for each transaction they just uh, they just total out or they just calculate the difference the ending difference and the final difference is paid by the party which is which has paid less right or who owes the payment to the other party right so this is what is the meaning of payment netting in simple terms after that close out netting so what is this close out netting let's say at the end the calculation comes out to that your friend your friend has to pay you rupees 100 but now your friend is saying that your friend is unable to pay because whatever money he had he had already spent it he already spent it now you know because this 100 rupees will have to will have to be borne by you it is kind of a loss since your friend is making a default that is why this 100 rupee is going to be paid by you so now you can say that this is a close out netting because all the earlier transaction they have got terminated because there was no use of doing the calculation and finding out the result the result only shows you the loss but you cannot recover the payment since the other party has defaulted so you can say that this is close out netting whenever there is a default the netting that takes place is close out so netting in itself means um, doing a total of different transactions right so I hope now you are clear with it. Moving ahead, you can see why are you why are we learning about netting? And that is because Lok Sabha has recently passed the bilateral netting of qualified financial transactions bill, which allows for the enforcement of netting for qualified financial contracts. So, guys, now try to put the same logic here. Now you and your friend you are not uh, spending on an outing but let's say you are dealing in derivatives or you are dealing in swaps you are de dealing in different kind of financial products. So different parties who deal with each other on the basis of different financial products obviously at the end they owe something to each other right. So netting means not do uh, not completing the entire transaction uh, like uh, if you are spending for ticket then your friend is not paying you at that time but the entire expenditure is calculated and the ex entire balance is find out right so Lok Sabha has recently allowed that okay 
people uh, parties who deal with each other on the basis of financial products rather than making good of every payment they can net all the payments together as you can see they passed this bill on september 20 yes uh, on sunday right so here you can see bilateral netting refers to offsetting claims arising from dealings between two parties to determine the net amount payable or receivable from one party to the another you can apply the same logic of the example here and now here we are talking about the payments of qualified financial contracts so if you see you had four contracts with your friend for tickets for pasta for mcd and up and at last for ice cream right so you had four different contracts so we can say we can say that that each contract is a qualified financial contract now what is this qualified financial contract a contract which is based upon the financial products and is defined properly by any of the authority it can be rbi it can be sebi it can be the insurance regulator or the pension fund regulator or the ifsc authority so these are different different regulators who can uh, define that what is a qualified financial contract if you want to understand it it is simply a contract based on financial product but the details are described by these authorities right so the key provisions under this bill include netting of payments and putting some limitations of administration practitioners so guys if you remember we also talk, talked about close out netting which happens in the case of a default whenever there is a default there is a person appointed called the administration practitioner so there can be different name for this practitioner for this administration practitioner uh, also called insolvency practitioner sometimes so these can be different persons but at the end simply they are just people appointed to overlook the A whole insolvency process whenever one party defaults in this contract, right? So uh, this this bill also includes provisions to limit some powers of administration practitioners so that they are not able to move money to whatever money the defaulting party is left with. They are not able to put that money to the inefficient uses, right? Moving ahead to the next question for today. Here you can see question number third. Okay, and this question says RBI has been successful in bringing the bond yields down in 2020, which are near the 10-year lows, but they have been rising recently. Okay, one more trend reversal: the 10-year yield has climbed 20 basis points in July and August to settle around some 6 percent. From below mentioned statement, select the one or ones which are pushing the yields up. Right. so guys very simple question it says rbi has been trying to pull down the bond yields and they have been uh, they have seen some considerable success into this field but recently in past according to the data of some past two months they have seen a trend reversal that once again the yields have started to to soar a little bit you have to tell the reasons behind this trend reversal behind this soaring of yields right here are your options in the green box and you have to select out of this four these four statements right moving ahead to the solution for this question and the solution is b so b means the correct statements are one and the correct statements are one and two so rising inflation and the conflict between central and state governments over fulfillment of gst shortfall these are the two reasons pushing the yields up now first of all how does inflation affect the yields so guys see what what are bond yields whenever there is a borrower there is an entity who wants to borrow money from market that borrower issues bonds and on these bonds whatever reward it pays to the bond holders is known as yield right so basically if the yields are high it means the cost of borrowing is high and if the yields are low that means the cost of borrowing is low now if see when this borrower is issuing the bonds it is taking money from the holder right now holder is the lender who is providing money to the bond issuer right so now if inflation is rising very fast 
this lender would want more compensation for the money he is giving to the borrower in return for the bond right so that is why due to that more compensation that is required by the lender retail inflation leads to some pushing up of these yields right after that central and state governments so there is much of a confusion i think we have discussed it in previous sessions also that how they are not agreeing on one uh, process that how should they go about fulfilling the shortfall for states so this uncertainty is also is also leading to pushing up of bond yields because if the central government ends up borrowing then obviously they, that that is going to push the yields up we discussed in in one of our previous session right moving ahead here you can see a little bit about inflation see so uh, they are saying that this uh, the yield was about 6% in 2008 when there was global financial crisis and it hit right so now this pandemic this is much more severe than that than this global financial crisis that is why the yield should be much lower because the economic devastation is more than that crisis right but the inflation but the bond yields they are around around this part right we just learned in question that it is about 6% that means they should have been lower but they are not there yet right so these are some more details about bond yields i think you can check them out on your own and nothing more difficult nothing very difficult open market operations and operation twist we have learned about all of these things in previous sessions too moving ahead to the next question for today okay sorry move, before moving ahead here is a graph that shows you the movement of the bond yields you can see how high they were in april 20 then they fell drastically by the efforts of rbi but they have been rising a little bit here as you can see right so guys here is your fourth question for today which says according to the new rules on verifying the origin of imports under the free trade deals the exporting nation has to prove that at least dash of the value addition was done there the exporting nation so we are talking that if there is a country that uh, exports some goods to india and india imports those goods from that particular country they have to prove that a certain percentage of value addition of that entire product was done in that particular exporting nation then only they would be able to enjoy or avail some of the benefits that are provi provided to provided to exporters under this free trade agreement or free trade deals right moving ahead to solution for this question and the solution for this question is option d okay option d means 35% of the value addition should have been done under that exporting country so let's say if there is a country let's say if there is indonesia indonesia is exporting something to india let's say they are exporting shirts to india okay here indonesia is the exporter and india is the importer now india would provide indonesia would some with some trade benefits or concessional import only when indonesia would be able to prove that 35% of value addition on this shirts was done in indonesia itself not in any other country right so this is the entire question you can see here it is talking about the asean fta association of southeast asian nations so under this free trade agreement i think we have learned that what is a free trade area uh, in one of our pre uh, previous sessions where there are less or no negligible trade restrictions so we provide concessional rates or duty free uh, imports to indo uh, imports from indonesia singapore malaysia thailand and vietnam on account of bulk imports into india right so why is this being done why is such uh, mark of 35% selected this is so because uh, some other countries would not be allowed to pull uh, to uh, to send their goods to india by routing or directing it through some other 
country so that is why we are saying 35% should be made on made in indonesia right so basically india wants to ban chinese imports it doesn't want chinese products entering its boundaries that is why it is saying that if we are importing from indonesia that product should have been from indonesia right so in these new rules they empower indian authorities to verify from the exporting nation that indian authorities can ask indonesian authorities that what is the scale of value addition and if they do not receive a satisfactory report they might not that exporting country might not be able to avail the benefits the duty relief will be denied and if it is found that the benefit was wrongly claimed agar aisa kuch pata chale ki exporting nation kuch ghapla karke ya if they are following some uh, wrongful techniques to avail that benefit then benefit will be denied for a number of consignments or a number of years to come on similar goods from the uh, from the from a particular from that particular exporting country and on some particular exported goods right moving ahead to the next question for today okay here is the last question for today which says which type of guarantee refers to an individual's legal promise to repay credit issued to a business for which they serve as an executive or partner moving ahead to solution for this question and the solution is option a option a means the correct answer is personal guarantee so now what is the meaning of this particular question right so let's say there is a person mr a this mr a runs a startup now mr a wants to acquire some funding for this startup and mr a goes to a bank that okay provide me with some money give me some loan i want to put money into my business right but bank is saying that the startup is very new okay your idea might be great but how do we trust you you do not have any uh, do not have any credit history and you are a very small organization so we do not have much information about you we cannot give you the loan but so uh, why is bank not giving the loan because bank is saying what if you run with a uh, run away with our money then how can how are we going to recover our payment now mr a says it's okay i have a house in my name it's a very nice property expensive property if i do not fulfill the loan that you are providing to me and i do not repay the loan you can have this house sell it and recover your payment so basically mr a is providing some personal assets for the loan so guys here to we are talking about startups but here this personal guarantee talks about a company when a company or a business which is an artificial person it takes a loan from bank and some of its employees or some of its top management personnel they put their own assets at stake or they give personal guarantee that okay if if this business is not able to fulfill your dues or fulfill your loan you can come and take our personal assets and recover your loan right so do you remember that in in companies the liability of an owner those are the shareholders their liability is only restricted or limited to their share holding they do not have to use their personal assets if the business defaults right because business is an artificial person distinct from its shareholders but when personal guarantee is provided when some employee of the business top management they say okay if uh, you can use our personal assets for recovering your loan so that increases the chances of a lender giving that business a loan that is a personal guarantee right so this is usually used by small businesses or um, which do not have such credit history and about whom much information is not available so as you can see here provides an extra layer of protection to the lender credit issuer usually bank or some non bank lenders like nbfcs so they make sure that they will be repaid personal guarantees are used in credit deals to secure fundings for business and personal guarantee is given principals of the company pledge their own assets as i told you their personal assets and agree to repay a debt from personal capital in case the company defaults 
so why are we talking about talking about this personal guarantee because many promoters who have taken loan for their businesses from many state run banks or private sector banks these banks are thinking to revoke invoke that uh, invoke those guarantees that prom pro uh, promoters have provided the banks with so as you can see here they are thinking to invoke personal guarantees so that they can collect their money back on about 300 promoters for corporate loans so recent examples you can see sbi invoking the guarantee against anil ambani although this case is still in courts and recently uh, there was a stay that was put that okay uh, their per anil ambani's personal assets cannot be used and recently court refused to uh, vacate that stay when sbi asked them to do so right so and one more case, Sanjay Singh, again Sanjay Singhal, former chairman of Bhushan Power and Steel Limited. So guys, but this is not a very easy task. Pulling a, a personal guarantee is not very easy for banks as it is very time consuming process. The promoters who are very high reaching people, they are usually uh, big industrialists and uh, very big influencers. So that is why it is not very easy to pull money out of their pockets or out of their uh, personal assets right that is why banks are not much into using this option unless and until they are forced to do so or they are in deep financial distress right so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then don't forget to give us a thumbs up i'll be back tomorrow with some new set of questions and if there is any article in which you are facing any problem or there is a concept that you are facing difficulty with you can let us know in the comments and we'll try to cover it up in the upcoming sessions so thank you for being here and i'll see you in the next session till then take care of yourself keep your studies going on thank you